Welcome to one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Binary Land, brought to us by Hudson Soft. Binary Land is a pretty fun, unique puzzle game that was originally created for the MXX computer systems, but then later ported over to the Famicom, unfortunately, only in Japan. The game has you playing as two penguins, Gurin and Milan, and at the beginning of the game you can pick which one you want to have as your main penguin, but you're always controlling both of the penguins at the same time. The two penguins are in love, and in every level they're on the opposite side of the screen from one another, and your goal in the game is to guide them to the heart located in the cage at the top center of the screen. Both characters must be on the opposite sides of the cage when they unite in order for you to actually complete a stage. It brings forth a pretty unique dimension to this puzzle style of game, which has similar movements and style and reminds me very much of the Eggerland series or Adventures of Lolo. Your main form of attack for your penguins is this, like, ice move that they're able to kind of throw out in order to thwart the enemies, such as the spiders and the spider webs. Every couple of rounds, you'll do a bonus level, where you must collect a certain number of hearts. Your partner penguin will be stuck in a web, and just like the regular levels of the game, if you ever get caught in the web, your partner can free you. But if both penguins are both stuck in a web, that's when you end up losing a life, or if one of them runs into various enemies such as the flames that we'll be seeing later on, or the other spiders. Getting used to controlling both penguins at once, I have to say, takes a very long time, but it feels quite rewarding once you kind of like have it down to a science of being able to figure out where you need to move, how much you should move one penguin, and using the walls to your advantage, walking into them to help you kind of guide your penguin. Now, there are some power-ups and other score items as your goal in the game, like many classic early Famicom titles, is to focus more on getting a high score than it is actually completing the game. Though, for those who would like to, there actually are 99 levels in the game, but you don't get any ending, it just ends. So, I'm only going to be going through kind of like the first set of levels, which averages out to be 17 rounds in the game, introducing all the elements and enemies that you'll be battling, so if you want to continue playing past that 17th round, you'll already know how to handle anything that may come forth later on. You always want to pretty much be moving slowly through areas, and you'll get used to like how far you can move a penguin and where's the best way to go in order to kind of get them to unite. Like you can see right here, I kind of have to like manipulate it a little bit so one penguin's close enough, then bring up the other penguin in order to walk forward and grab the heart inside of the cage. If for some reason one of your penguins gets caught in that web, be very cautious and quickly try to head over to the opposite side of the screen to try to free them, because these spiders are no joke, and the longer the timer goes, enemies end up picking up the pace, and it reminds me very similarly to the end of a level in Bubble Bobble, if you wait too long on a screen, the enemies get supercharged and start coming at you even quicker. What I grabbed here is another power-up that reminds me straight out of Bubble Bobble, and allows your characters to flash and you have invincibility and super speed. This is represented by the cards with the whale on them, and they appear quite often in levels, but they only appear for a few moments, and if you're able to grab it, you're going to be able to get that special power-up and just be able to charge through all the enemies, including the fire, which is the deadliest enemy in the game by far, and you can only defeat the fire, as far as I know, by using that special power-up. So I'm going to quickly go here and grab the power-up once again, so that I can run through the rest of the webs that are kind of set up, and then unite my two penguins to complete round number seven, and we'll go to the second of the bonus levels. Now, you don't have to destroy everything on screen. You just have to make sure that your penguins are united at the goal, so you don't have to go worry about running around and grabbing all the, maybe the extra webs that are kind of setting up, unless you have extra time and you want some bonus points. The Invincibility Superpower also does appear in the bonus round. You can see that it appeared for a few moments in the lower right corner. Obviously, the easiest way to unite two characters is if you have the entire top portion to walk around, you can go to the opposite ends with them and then, of course, just meet them in the center. Introduced in round number 9 are the other type of enemy, the birds. Now, they're technically, I guess, not enemies since they don't kill you, but they can be an annoyance, but also sometimes save you. Because when you run into one of the birds, it flips you 
to the opposite side. It switches your two penguins. And because of this, they're kind of frozen in place. And when they land on their opposite sides from where they were, they may run into an enemy because the enemies don't stop moving during the course of your two characters switching. But it can also save you sometimes because maybe a fire or a spider was right about to hit you and by switching it somehow went past where your character was during that brief period of time that your characters spend switching sides. As you may have noticed, some of the other items I picked up that I haven't mentioned are just really for score purposes, such as the ring or the umbrella with water drops coming off of it, uh, as well as the harp, all granting you different amounts of score. Once you've been able to get the kind of like round 10 or above, you'll start to get the hang of the movement overall. And you're always kind of looking around for that power up. I'm always like keeping an eye on the bottom part of the screen, especially early in the level. It likes to appear pretty early on at the bottom. So you may have moved away from that. You're going towards the top part of the screen, but then it appears back where you very first started. So you always want to keep an eye out at the bottom of the screen. Not just for other power-ups or score items, but mostly that invincibility superpower that really is going to help you out. Now, also, one thing I did grab here was a 1-up bonus that you can sometimes find hidden in walls. And you may have noticed right there my two characters switching actually kind of benefited me. Here, I'm going to run my one character into the wall for a few seconds, get him closer, and then go into, like, the little openings so that I can complete the stage and move on to the third of the bonus rounds. Now this is a really tough bonus round as there are a lot of hearts mostly on the right side and you do not have a lot of time. Also the timer does not stop if the bird ends up hitting you and causing you to switch sides. So this is usually a bonus round I end up failing because I don't have quite enough time. Maybe just a few more seconds and I'd be able to complete it. But it's all or nothing when it comes to these bonus rounds. The final element introduced in Binary Land is the flame enemies. These guys are nasty. They move quickly. They cannot be stopped by your ice power-up. And they have a pretty hard pattern to sometimes be able to judge. Making the levels past round number 13 really, really challenging. Judging how the fire is going to come towards you when it's going to actually go into one of the hallways or just little like alcoves can be really hard. Sometimes you're just like biting your nails waiting for it to kind of come by and then you sometimes also have to just take your chance when you get that little bit of a window like I was able to at the end of that round where I just saw that the flame had just passed where I was I rushed towards the center. When that speed up happens and your characters and the enemies are quicker, it really gets hard to actually be able to get through. So you're always kind of hoping for one of those invincibility items like the one I was able to grab here. So I can just kind of get through the level quickly and move right on to that next round. Some of the levels have multiple flames as you may see as well. And Hull, just trying to figure out when you can get that opportunity to sneak by... Uh, there's not a whole lot of like concrete strategy I can really give for it. It's more or less just kind of like picking your spot and then sticking to it. Like right here, I was I was lucky. I was able to get the flame to go down the hallway. Sometimes he would have come right towards me and that would have just been the end of my life at that point. So here we go, the 17th round. This is going to be the last one that, that we're going to be doing for this level. Is it pretty much from this point on you do a bonus round and then it kind of goes back to the first setup just with all the things that have been implemented since the game started all in every level from, from that point on. Try to get my guy over now with two flames like I said and they don't have a lot of places for these flames to go. My goal is to get Gurren over to that little, like, left alcove just to the left of the far right wall uh, in order to kind of have him there for just a moment when the flame uh, will then hopefully go past me, above me, giving me just a few seconds in order to kind of get over into the next alcove and then hopefully meet the penguins up. I even got switched by the bird. But I was able to meet him up and complete round 17, and then we get to do the bonus round once again. Same deal as the one we dealt with earlier, so we have to deal with the bird during the course of this, which makes it a little bit difficult. That bird ends up hitting you, 
uh, you're going to be in trouble, but thankfully I even got a power-up to help me out to finish this up. So, there we go. And once you complete round uh, 17 uh, and do the bonus round when you go into round 19, uh, you're pretty much starting over just with all the stuff like the flames, the birds, and of course the spiders being plenty prevalent. I have to say, though, if you want a fun, arcade, different style puzzle game than maybe you're used to on the NES, Famicom, definitely check out Binary Land. It's actually a really cool game that I had never really messed with until working on this video, and I had a lot of fun trying to figure it out and get better at it. But anyway, guys, that will wrap up this episode of Play It Through. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up or commenting down below. Now, if you enjoyed this game I mentioned earlier on in the run about Adventures of Lolo, why not check out that playthrough I did a while back. Easily one of the funnest puzzle-style games on the NES. I also need to thank all the members of my Patreon. You guys are amazing, and your continued support allows me to keep doing this. So, thank you. I, I can't say thank you enough, so I will just keep saying it um, every possible chance I get to. Uh, you can help out as well. Just click that little Patreon button, and there's some incentives for doing so. As little as a dollar a month can help keep this channel alive. And there's plenty of other ways to help out the channel as well. If you like the content, share it with your friends. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever uh, you do your social media stuff. Or watch the ads. Not having ad block on during the course of videos. Like, you see those annoying ads, and I know they're annoying, but every ad you watch does actually help out this channel as well. So, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and of course... I hope you enjoy.